So with our vertices transformed into screen space, we are now ready to determine how to color individual pixels in order to create a raster image to represent our geometric primitives. The rasterization process uses the fact that vertices have already been projected into screen space and can be related to the pixel coordinates of that image. Right, so let's say we have we have some vertices, right, corresponding to the vertices of this polygon right here. And I'm just gonna loosely try and draw this, uh, maybe something like this. Right, so these vertices have already been projected into screen space. So we know the coordinates of each vertex. Now, there are different optimizations for the rasterization process, but generally speaking, the following tasks are executed. So we start by iterating over every triangle. And for every triangle, well, first we just do a real fast optimization uh, just to make it so that we don't have to check every single pixel of the final image. Our, our first little optimization is just going to be determining the triangle's bounding box. So pretty simple to do. We just check the XY coordinates of every vertex here and store the minimum and maximum XY coordinates of these three vertices. So this vertex right here will have the smallest X coordinate giving us a, uh, a lower boundary for the, uh, the, the shape of the polygon or the uh, area it takes up. Uh, the, let's see, this vertex over here will have the largest X coordinate, so we can store that as the maximum X value, specifying this, you know, this, this upper limit. We're not going to search beyond this upper limit for the X coordinate. Um, you know, so those are some decent boundaries right there. Uh, we're also going to store the minimum, the minimum Y coordinate, which would be, uh, well, it's hard to tell which which vertex has the lower y coordinate, but maybe they're the same. Uh, but we would store that that minimum y coordinate as well as the maximum, the maximum y coordinate, and get this bounding box. So now we know that well, we only have to search through these pixels. We don't have to worry about the rest of these. Uh, we're guaranteed that our polygon is not going to be overlapping any of those other pixels. So a uh, great optimization there just from the get-go. So with this bounding box determined, we uh, basically just iterate through every pixel inside the bounding box. And uh, what we're going to do is check to see if a pixel, in fact the center of the pixel, if that overlaps with uh, a surface point on the given triangle. So this this first pixel right here, let's take a look at its center. And yes, that does intersect. Definitely these ones will as well. Let's just quickly draw that in there. But this one, this pixel center down here is outside the triangle. So we are not going to uh, be considering this pixel for uh, to represent part of this uh, polygon. All right. so. For these pixels that do overlap with a surface point on the triangle, um, well, we will we will be performing an additional step in here to figure out if anything else, if if any other polygon is in front of this pixel. However, uh, just uh, ignoring that for the time being, we will come back to that in just a few short moments. But uh, we can just finish off the algorithm here and say that well, for any any pixel where we do uh, find that, that we're overlapping with a, a surface point on the triangle, well, we can just go ahead and fill those in and save the color of that surface point uh, in what we call the color buffer, which is just an array of color values uh, corresponding to the pixel dimensions of the image itself, right? So just a just a standard array, nothing fancy about it. We're just storing color vectors inside and uh, we'll be using those to draw the final image. So finishing off the polygon here, we can see that, well, yet yeah, this, this pixel is inside. So we can uh, fill in that whole pixel there. Of course, we're going to get, we're going to start getting a jagged edge here, which is where the, uh, the issue of aliasing comes in. But, uh, well, that is... That is definitely a separate step that has to be dealt with. Uh, perhaps, perhaps this, 
perhaps the, these pixels are also included. Uh, not that one, it's uh, that the center is not overlapping with the triangle, but yes, this one and this one, and uh, yeah, it looks, looks like that center is also inside there. So, so here we go. Here would be uh, how we would rasterize um, at a very low resolution, how we would rasterize this uh, kind of light red triangle. All right, now, again, there is that, uh, the visibility problem. We don't know if any other polygon is in front of this, uh, this polygon. We, we don't know if, it, if ultimately it's actually visible, but uh, let's hang on to that question and we'll address it in one moment. First, we just need to realize that the color values that we are uh, storing in the color buffer for every pixel here, uh, these color values will be determined by the polygon's material any potential texture information being stored uh, for that polygon, as well as lighting. Now materials, textures, and lighting will be discussed later on in the course. All right, now back to the visibility problem. We know that we need to consider the possibility that, well, there might be uh, maybe another polygon in front of this red polygon. And so actually, I'm just gonna go ahead and erase these lines just to show that the purple polygon is indeed in front of the the red one all right so what do we do how do we solve uh, what is called the the visibility problem or in other words the hidden surface problem all right so remember those z values that we had available to us in the cvv that we were hanging on to well, it turns out we are going to make good use of those to determine uh, basically the distance to polygons, uh, individual polygons, and we're going to use that to figure out uh, yeah, which one is in front of another. So as we test if pixels lie within a projected polygon, we also calculate the distance from the camera to that, uh, that, that small little area of surface that is being overlapped by the pixel, right? So let's say we're dealing with maybe this pixel up here. Um, when we discover that, we, that we're overlapping with uh, the, the red polygon, we're also going to figure out the distance from the camera to this small little bit of surface area that, we are, uh, that, that, that we're overlapping with that pixel. And we're gonna hang on to that value and store it in something called the Z buffer. And the Z buffer is just another array of values uh, of, of the same dimensions as the color buffer, but we're only storing one number for each pixel, and that's just the distance from the camera to uh, the surface that, uh, that was overlapping the pixel. So let's uh, go back here and actually consider a different uh, pixel in this image here, one that will eventually be overlapped by the purple triangle. Um, let's consider how about maybe this pixel right in or near the center here. All right, so uh, when we first, of course, we were, we were first uh, considering the red triangle and figuring out um, wh where it would lie in the image and what pixel values to color in and everything. So we would have stored Let's say maybe that was the first triangle we were iterating over. We would have stored the Z value uh, corresponding to the distance from that, that point, that surface point to the camera. And maybe that was, let's say, 0.2 units, just for the sake of example. Except later on here, when we, uh, when we iterate over this purple triangle, so again, I'll just loosely... Uh, loosely draw something that resembles that purple triangle. Later on, when we discover this same pixel here, and we discover that, ah, well, the, the purple triangle also overlaps with that pixel. Well, what we go ahead and do is well, the same thing. We just find the, the distance from the camera to this surface point on the purple triangle. And maybe that Z value is equal to, uh, well, maybe it's 0 0.1 units. And so, if the newly discovered Z value is less than the old Z value, well, then we know that this new surface point that we just discovered is in front of the other, the old surface point. So we just overwrite that old value. 
and store the new value, right? And we also go into the color buffer and save the new color that we just observed uh, in the scene, right? And we, we hang on to that, uh, that information, understanding that, uh, well, the, the purple triangle indeed was, or at least for that pixel, the surface point overlapped by that pixel uh, is on the purple triangle, which is in front of the red triangle.